Hey, everybody, and happy Tuesday. I hope y'all are ready to disrupt your now because tonight we have a guest who is really going to give y'all some insight into how he basically kind of remade himself or how he felt. So our guest tonight is Talor Zamir, and please correct me if I'm saying it incorrectly, but he went through this issue where all of a sudden he could barely even write. He can only like type two sentences at a time. So Talor, I'm going to let you tell your backstory, like maybe even what you were doing before then and what happened and set the stage for us to talk. Sure, sure. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I've been an internet entrepreneur for about 15 years now. And for the first several years, I was uh, mainly a consultant banging away on a keyboard um, with bad posture, you know, not really, not Sounds really paying okay. attention to. Yeah, right. Not really paying attention to what I'm putting in my body, like in terms of food, not really not taking care of my health. And so I was really driven, you know, I was really driven. I wanted to do something. So it was just work, 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 grind, grind, grind. I also had a one-year-old and a two-year-old daughter at the time. Uh, they're now nine and 10. And, wow. um, and so there was just kind of, I guess, a lot of things at once, you know, I was, I was, I was actually in debt at the time, two little baby daughters at home, really trying really driven to try to make something happen. And um, something happened in my body where I had massive inflammation uh, in my mm -hmm. arms, um, so much so that, like you said, I couldn't type more than a couple of sentences without just being in massive pain. So I actually had to use a voice dictation software for two years wow. um, just to give myself time to heal. And uh, I had to teach myself to talk in sound bites. Um, and uh, I, I really, when it first happened, I thought, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't work on a computer anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was so scared. So, you know, that was kind of like the bottom of it. Uh, but actually, you know, now I, I like to say that, and, and hopefully this inspires people listening now, you know, what you think could be the worst thing that ever happened to you might end up being the best thing that could ever happen yeah. to you. Yeah. That's so, so true. Yeah. We, we hear yeah. that. So we hear that so frequently. Am I, am I echoing to y'all? A little bit, a little bit today. <laughs> I'm, I don't know what's going on with my computer. I, I turn it off, but when I talk, I'm hearing myself echo back. So I'm very sorry. It's okay for me. It's not too bad. Okay. Um, well, but yeah, I think straight now, I don't know what's going on, but I was going to tell you, Laura, it's funny that you were in the internet business for 15 years, which I know you still are, but I've been for 25 years. You had to have started really young, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm 40 now. I just turned 40. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, so, so back basically, you know, again, what I thought was the worst thing ended up being the best thing for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, I started using all these different compression sleeves and wrist braces. And, you know, at first I was, I was actually searching for a solution outside myself and, and yeah. we can get to that later, how in the end, the solution ended up coming from inside, right? Um, in, I, I realized in the end that inflammation comes from inside and what you put in your body and your mind, actually both. So it was a lot of mind body work that I had to do to, to kind of heal myself essentially. Um, but in, in the process, as, as I was in pain, I was trying all these different braces and compression sleeves and, and uh, actually became so familiar with these products that I started a company and created my own brand of different compression sleeves and braces and scaled that up to uh, actually an eight-figure business before selling that a couple years ago. Wow. Um, and that's just one part of it, which, which the more important part of why that was the best thing that ever happened to me is because it sent me on a health journey. Um, so to, to heal myself, I had to learn everything possible about health and lowering inflammation in the body. And so that sent me, I became obsessed and I still am to this day. These days, I'm, you know, what these people call sort of a biohacker, um, you know, someone who's trying to optimize my mental and physical energy. And so that led me a few years ago to start my brand called Peak Performance, which I'm so passionate about that I get to now teach other people about health and optimizing your mental and physical energy. Uh, and through my company, Peak Performance, we offer really high quality organic superfoods and supplements. But more importantly, it's about inspiration and transformation and helping people um, really be the best they can be. 
That is so interesting. And I was on your site earlier looking at the different products. I'm really interested in learning more outside of this. But, uh, you know, and it's funny, Rachel, when y'all were talking before I came on, did you tell him about your experience? I did. We were talking about that briefly. And what he's saying resonates with me so much. We were talking about, you know, three years ago that being diagnosed with type one diabetes. And then even as of last year, dealing with severe carpal tunnel, where it was, you know, the am I going to be able to use my arms? What's causing it? Couldn't sleep. Literally had to stay like sitting upright for months at a time, trying to sleep on the couch like those kinds of things. And I have been a little bit on the same thing, just on this journey to figure out inflammation for myself and what all of that means internally, because it's such a big piece of not only performance, but just your whole, it just affects every single thing that you do. Absolutely. I bet yeah. his products will help you. I know we need to have an awful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how did you find out about the, the product? I know you tried like a million different things. How did you kind of zero in on the products that you did? Yeah. So uh, again, kind of like what I said before, inflammation comes from inside of you. So eventually I realized that while it was great to get the experience of using all these braces and compression sleeves and all that, um, what that wasn't, th that's really just a crutch. That's like a short term fix. Right. And so even people listening now, there's a lot of people with back pain or knee pain or shoulder pain or wrist pain. And you know, you, you know, a back brace might be a short term fix, but it's not going to solve your issue because inflammation comes from inside. So I restarted researching how to you how to lower inflammation in my body. Um, so I've cut out completely uh, sugar, fried foods. Um, I actually don't eat bread or pasta. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and but a lot of people uh, you know, unless they're in pain, they don't really get that motivation. Yeah, um, yeah. But a lot of people are motivated by by losing weight. And so what I say is the same types of foods um, that help you lose weight are the same types of foods that lower inflammation in your body, right? Mm -hmm. Sugar, fried foods, you know, soda, um, you know, sweets and cakes and things like that. Those are the I'm gonna same things. My, I'm going to have my diet, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you slide on, on this one. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, it's, there's those same things that help you lose weight. It's also what helps you lower inflammation. And by the way, every major disease, you know, comes from inflammation somewhere in the body. So that's what I realized is actually the most important thing about health is lowering inflammation in the body. So, so that, that's really, that was the, that was the part about putting things in your body and then mentally also, right? So, you know, stress, there's actually a great book called the upside of stress. I really okay. enjoyed the book and it actually helps me reframe the way I think about stress. And, and, you know, at the time it was, it was kind of grinding, grinding, really like, oh, like we got to do this. And that kind of like, oh, that's like, you know, you're kind of like, you're, you're tense, you're, yeah. you're not relaxed. Right. So just learning how to relax. So now I have, I start my day every morning with quiet time. Uh, and actually my income has gone up ever since I've worked I guess you would say work less in terms of busy work, yeah. but do more quiet time, thinking time, start my morning with an hour of breathing, visualization, gratitude, um, um, meditation sometimes, different, different, you know, um, mindfulness techniques and things like that. And also high level thinking, right? When you can really get quiet and silent and, and it really allows you to think, okay, what do I really want in life? And uh, here's here's an interesting story. So I actually had uh, this was a couple years later. I, I, I got I got a little bit better a couple years later and I was still doing consulting and I had a client that I was making actually quite a bit of money from over over six figures a year from from a client, um, which was this one client was about half my income. But mm. in my morning quiet time, I kept going outside and thinking, you know, is this really what I want? This client keeps trying to take more and more of my time. They want they want yeah. more from me, but they don't want to pay me more. And and you know what's my goal? Well, if my goal is to become a millionaire, I'm not going to achieve it by doing the same thing that I'm doing now. Um, and so I actually ended up firing this client, which was half my income with two young daughters, um, which is not easy to do. You know, let go of over six figure paycheck, but. I, but my quiet time really helped me realize, look, if this, if my goal is to 
become a millionaire, then I'm going to need to take a different route. And so I did it and it worked out for me. That's such an important point. And even though I've been in business, in this business since 96, it took me many years before I would actually fire a client because you, uh, it's kind of human nature. We get so zeroed in on not just the money, but like trying to please everybody and whatever they want, you're going to do it. So it, it's heartening to hear that it made such a difference. It's definitely made a difference for me too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've had a similar experience. Lisa, I know we've talked about this before. It's, it's, it's the mental energy I think that comes from that you gain back from getting rid of that kind of thing. I'm not sure if it's clarity or whatever that looks like for you, but it's, it's a big relief I have found to just part ways with things that are not serving you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Talor, I want to ask you uh, the, uh, the morning routine. Cause I know a lot mm -hmm. of people who, like they do the same thing every morning, but you don't, you mix it up. Yeah. Yeah. I do think I mix it up. Um, so there's a few things I really like. So in the last few months I, uh, came across it or someone told me about this Tony Robbins priming video. So okay. it's a, it's a 15 minute video and I, I keep my phone on airplane mode. I've downloaded the video. Uh, don't, you don't want to have your phone on when you're doing your quiet time, preferably you'd leave your phone inside, but I'll bring it out. If I'm, if I'm doing this, if I want to do this video, it's 15 minutes and it walks you through just gratitude and visualization and really kind of it's called priming because it's priming you priming your mind for the day so that's a great way if, if, an easy way people can just search youtube for tony robbins priming and download that video and that's a great 15 minute start to your morning um sometimes i do uh wim hof uh breathing uh strategies i also like to finish my shower on on cold as cold as it can go that's from wim hof the ice man uh, uh -huh. that actually does lower inflammation in your body and also uh think about they, there's not much more that's going to wake you up uh faster than a cold shower so really wakes up your mind and, and it lowers inflammation in your body but he also has some really great uh breathing strategies and there's many other great breathing strategies i also have a great book that i would recommend it's okay. called U Squared, Y-O-U to the second power. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's by Price Pritchett, uh, who I think is actually a consultant out of Dallas. I've never met him, but this book, you can actually, it's about making a quantum leap in life. It's also probably inspired me to fire that client because a quantum leap requires you to think differently, right? Yeah. Like we can, we can work harder and maybe increase our businesses by 10% or 20% a year. But if you want to triple or 5X or 10X or have a, a quantum leap, um, you got to do something drastically different. And so this yeah. book also, I highly recommend it, Y-O-U to the second power, U squared by Price Pritchett. It takes about 20 minutes to read and it really helps you walk through different guided visualizations and high level thinking. So I've probably read this book over 500 times because um, I take it out with me in my morning morning routine, and uh, it's it's done uh, it's done amazing for me. So that's another thing I'll do. Um, there's some box breathing that I learned learned from uh, a Navy SEAL. Uh, you could look up uh, box breathing. I think on YouTube, uh, Mark Divine Navy SEAL. That's a nice, really good breathing strategy. Um, and then just a lot of visualization and gratitude. So I'm I'm constantly visualizing me, my wife, and my two daughters all living to over 100 years old, living happy, healthy lives. Uh, we have a great relationship. I'm visualizing 10 years out. Okay, both my daughters have graduated high school. They've got a good head on their shoulders. The boys they're talking to are nice boys. Um, you know, like literally I'm visualizing all this stuff. You know, I have a certain net worth. We're going on family vacations. So gratitude and being grateful for, thank you so much for everything we already have, our health, yeah. our happiness, our family. Um, and that just really sets my day off and, and puts me in the right state of mind. And so I would, I would contest to people that that's more important than getting in and doing busy work. Yes. That kind of work is more important. And then I'll even go to the gym in the middle of the day and listen to audiobooks or podcasts at the gym. And I consider that part of my work day. It yeah. energizes my mind and body and I feel great and I'm learning and working out my body. So working out my mind and my body um, at the same time. That's great. Um, 
I, I always, I know Rachel has heard me say this a million times, but I love to mow the grass and I will mow for hours. I mean, with a push mower, we have a lot of hills. I will mow for hours and listen to podcasts and, you know, it'll be, I'll be like, oh, I want to listen to another one. So that'll make me mow another hour. And last year, my doctor was asking me about, you know, my fitness and I was like, well, I mow the grass a lot in the summer. And she kind of rolled her eyes thinking like, small lawn and I showed her my Fitbit app and I'm like, yeah, I mowed nine miles yesterday. And she goes, oh, okay, <laughs> shut up. But it really, it really, even though I'm out doing something, it's cardio and strength, but mm -hmm. I get in this Zen state and I can just like think. So, well, it, I either listen to podcasts or I just do nothing, but I, mm -hmm. I love that. And I'm so glad that you recommended the, the video and that book. I'm definitely going to download those. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and getting outside in nature is another good part. So I like to go outside. And luckily, I'm here in Vegas, where it's sunny most of the year round. That's why I like being here. So I like going outside, maybe take my shirt off, get a little sunlight in the morning when it's not too strong. And just just being outside. Um, you know, they've actually done studies where, you know, you, you th think about this too, right? When you're on your phone, it's like tunnel vision. You're staring at this yeah. little phone and you're kind of closed off, right? Whereas imagine you're out in a field and you look up and everything is just completely open mm -hmm. and people are actually more open and receptive to new ideas when they're out in an open field compared to if they're inside staring at down at their, in, with tunnel vision at their smartphone. So I think that's important too. It makes so much sense. Yes. I, you know, I read some ebooks, but, and I'll buy them. Like if I'm like, oh, I want to read it right now. I don't want to wait for it to get, but I really prefer reading a paper book because mm -hmm. I'm on my computer all day anyway. And it's like, especially at night, I like to read myself to sleep. And if you're looking mm -hmm. at a screen, you know, you have all that blue light coming in and it's just not conducive to going to sleep. Right. right. No, I agree 100%. Yeah. Well, you know, I was going to say just the outside piece of it. You know, we, we now live on a, a very small farm, but that just going out in the middle of my work day and having a minute and sitting outside and just being in nature, there's something that's rejuvenating about that. But I find that it's almost if I don't do that, I notice a shift in my day. There's a big yeah difference in the days where I'm intentional about taking that time going outside, whether it, whether it's, you know, doing something with the animals that we have, or if it's just being mm -hmm. out there, there's a huge shift. So I resonate with that so much. For sure. Yeah. Another thing that I do with gratitude, you know, I love the clubhouse app, yeah. but I use it to like get away. And instead of going, sometimes I go into businessy rooms, but usually I don't. Usually I go find rooms where people are talking about gratitude and thankfulness and being mm. positive. And, you know, a lot of people think that things like that are kind of just hokey or whatever. And but and yeah, you can be around some people that it, it ends up being like forced or fake. But, you know, I love to go in rooms where people are just talking about what am I grateful for today? You know, and hearing other people talk about the things that they're grateful for can often help you realize things that you don't even think about yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us about, so you, you decided to start this business because mm -hmm. you had so much success, but I find very interesting also the the calls that you're helping through it with the vitamins for children. Tell us about yes. that. Yes. So, yeah, I'll, I'll back up a second first. And it was, again, probably during thinking time, I'm almost positive that it said, OK, well, I've, I've scaled up this other business. I've got money now. So if if I can do anything I want. Right. They always people always ask that question. If money wasn't an issue, what would you do? And so for me, it was, well, I would start a business around health and nutrition and inspire others to to do the same. So so that's kind of where it was born. And then it was kind of easy to do product development because it's like I'm just creating products that I want to take for myself. So that's kind of easy uh, and cool and fun. And then, yeah. And so then we also said, OK, you know, we really we, I wanted to have a cause as well behind it and and really give back as well. And so, yeah, we have a, a, a program with the nonprofit Vitamin Angels uh, for every unit sold. We supply vitamins to a child at risk of malnutrition. And uh, I believe uh, I think we're going to announce it pretty soon. But we're any day now we should be crossing the, the one million child uh, mark where we've supplied. That is so exciting. Children. 
Yeah, when yeah. I, I saw the statistics, it was an interview that I read with you on Forbes, I believe, an article on mm -hmm. Forbes. And I read that and I was like, it that's so exciting. And that's one of my big passions is always making business mean more than money. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And actually, I work with Rachel's brother, who is a NASCAR mm -hmm. driver, and that's how I met Rachel. We have the only NASCAR team that races to combat veteran suicide. So he wow. actually promotes nonprofits pro bono through his racing mm -hmm. um, that offer free veteran suicide um, services like um, mental and physical health services, job training and placement, motorsports therapy, and then another one that does entrepreneurship training and mentoring or mentoring yeah mentoring and training and to me it's it just makes business so much more fulfilling and i also met somebody that i think that you would really enjoy meeting his name is daryl hatton and he's the founder of connection point which is the company that one of his brands is called fundraiser f-u-n-d-r-a-z-r -E and then he's got sponsify and coco pay but i just mm -hmm. love working with other people who want to make their business mean more than the business. So I just want to tell you how much I appreciate that, especially for children. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, that's amazing what, what you all are doing as well. That's, that's really tremendous and I encourage everyone to, to find a cause. And, and, and by the way, people love that. People want to be a part of, yes. of a cause like that as well. So it, it really helps you know, separate yourself from, cause that's one of the things it's like, okay, I didn't just want to be another, I don't, I don't want to be another supplement company. You know, there's, yeah, there's plenty of people selling supplements. Out there. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So how do I differentiate, you know, as well? And, and obviously, you know, the cause is, is a great thing. That's one thing. And, and that's another thing I'm always thinking about in business. Like how can, how can, how can we do this even better? Right. And so mm -hmm. a lot of these supplement companies, um, our, our, what we did differently is we're, we third party test with an independent lab to ensure oh. that they're 100% safe. We, we, you know, where most of the people selling supplements online, they're not, they're not spending the extra thousands and thousands of dollars a month to do that. But, you know, again, that's something different where that's what I would want for myself. I'm taking me and my family take all these supplements. Um, I want to know a hundred percent that they're all tested. And so just always thinking like that, how can you, how can you give back more? How can you do something different or, or improve upon ideas that are already there? You know, I, I do try to think of new ideas, but it's a lot harder to, you know, come up with the new new uh, idea, new invention that has already been done already. That That's that's a lot tougher. Um, yeah. You know, we're not all coding technology wizards that can create the new <laughs> Facebook or whatever, but <laughs> we can we can build upon existing things that have been done and and think about how can we improve it? How can we do it better? How can we give back more? Yeah. I'm not sure if we mentioned that. We talked about the vitamins. I want, in case we didn't mention it, I want the listeners to understand that y'all match one for one. When someone buys a product from you, then yeah. you supply a child for a year, right, with vitamins? Yes. Wow. Yes, we buy them in bulk. We're able to buy it in bulk, uh, and uh, and it's the most important vitamin that these that these children need um, because a lot of them are not able to get the 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 nutrition that they need. And so, yeah, for every unit sold, you buy uh, twenty units. It's it's twenty children. Yeah. Wow, that that's amazing. Because I would think you know that that most companies be like, oh, if you buy X amount, you know, whatever hundred dollars or something. So kudos to you for doing that. Oh, thank you. How did you hook up with that nonprofit? Um, I came I came across them. I've been working with them for a few years now. So I think I met them um, at at an event somewhere. I can't remember exactly which one, but it was it was a health uh, and uh, event, and they were there, and and I just really loved the cause. So um, yeah, it was it was a great it was a great fit. I'm really happy about it. I was curious because I think there are a lot of people that they're like, yeah, I would love to do something good but I don't know what to do. And, and mm -hmm. I personally think if you try to force it, like I'm going to think of something, mm -hmm. then you're not, it's not going to be as fulfilling to you. And it's not going to be as genuine where if you just, if it just kind of happens organically, like you already love this, you have this passion for this and you ran into them. And, and like me, my husband's retired military and my mm -hmm. grandfather killed himself when I was five. My grandmother mm. tried to three years later. So, you know, it makes sense that military and 
suicide prevention are important to me. And I was working with Colin and just happened to be called by Racing for Heroes. So it happened spontaneously. Right. It's not like I was like, oh, what's something that, you know, I can get Colin to do to make him look good. And same thing for you. Right. You're, you're helping your kids health and you want other kids to be able to benefit the same who can't afford it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I I was thinking in my mind, I knew I wanted to do something and give back in some way. And then so when you, when that's in your mind, right, you're kind of then when you see things and then yeah. you'll say, oh, let me let me look into that further. Right. So um, that that's that's the power of intention as well. When you say, OK, this is my intention. I want to do this. And you don't need to know it right away. Like you said, you don't need to rush into it. But uh, if you have it in your mind, uh, when things come up or you overhear something here or there, and next thing you know, you've uh, you found what you're looking for. Yeah, I love that. Well, and I love your story because, well, as you know, the the show is called Disrupt Your Now, and mm -hmm. also I'm working on my next book, which which will be coming out later this year, and it's called Disrupt Your Now: The Successful Entrepreneur's Guide to Reimagining Your Business and Life. So I love what you've done because you took an already successful business, but you know your own problems, issues, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we're able to turn that into something that helps you, helps your family, but it helps so many other people. It, it's the perfect story of disrupting your life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of disruption uh, that happened there. And and then just, just in terms of being an entrepreneur over the years, right, there's a lot of disruption. And uh, from, from being a consultant to to again, making that decision to fire that client, to yeah. thinking. There was also another conscious decision I made in terms of, okay, so I was doing well as a consultant and then it, then there was uh, an avenue I could have gone, which is creating an agency for myself. So I got yeah. to the point where I was like, okay, the real next step is, uh, is to either create an agency or, or do something else. Um, but I, I knew myself and I knew that I wasn't really the type of person that wants to have, you know, to create a big agency and have hire dozens or hundreds of people and have hundreds of people working for me. There are some people that are great at that. Um, yeah. For me, I actually, I've been working from home for 15 years and I love it. I like going to the gym in the middle of the day, break up the day. I like going outside in the morning. So um, for me, I don't, you know, I'm more of a, sort of an sort of an introvert in a way that I just kind of like to work and do my own thing. And yes, we yep. have a dozen independent contractors and people all over the, the country and the world, uh, mostly here in the US that, that work for us all from home. Um, but I made that decision consciously like, you know, I could go this route, but I don't think that would be as an enjo as enjoyable for me. So what's another uh, solution? So, um, so I knew another solution would be trying to start a software company, right? Where 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 it could be scalable without having to hire a thousand people, right? Um, you know, like an Instagram sold to Facebook for a billion dollars with like nineteen or twelve employees or or something like that, right? Because it's because it's a software. So I started to look at which kind of business models then. Can you know? Would can I scale up without having to hire and manage so many people? And so, uh, e-commerce just became the perfect fit for me. Uh, first, with the compression sleeves and braces, and then when I saw the success I was having there, then I realized, okay, well now I can do this and do it with something that I'm even more passionate about and and enjoy. And so, I do think that e-commerce and um, launching uh, my own brand, which which many people can do, many people can you know, launch a ro their own brand around their passion. Amazon these days is an incredible tool. Uh, if you're passionate about something, um, obviously the 15 years of internet marketing helped, you know, give me a good background and be successful, especially in a very competitive um, uh, niche like, like supplements. Um, but there are lots of other little smaller niches that, um, that, that I've seen many people, you know, who just, they enjoy doing something. And then, um, you know, you might be working on a farm and you might realize, Hey, you know, there's, there's a, there's this little, there's a few little gadgets or this or that, that, you know, other people on a farm might need that, you know, the one I have here is not very good, but I could make a few improvements to it. And, and next thing you know, you've got a business, um, like that, that you've created your own brand, your own you thing that, that can be scaled up and, and, you know, is actual real brand or real company that, that you own. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, um, I do encourage people uh, along those lines as well. That is so true. And I love 
what you're talking about with how you really took a step back and thought about how do you like to work you know, your personality, that's one of my big things. I always tell people it's your business and you can make it anything you want. You don't have to build it like everybody else, even in your industry. Figure mm -hmm. out what fits your life, because why why own a business if you're not going to build it in the way that, you know, makes you the happiest? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, even now, you know, I have a lot of people coming to me and saying, yeah, you know, you could acquire you could create a, a fund and acquire all these other brands and then you'll have this big roll up of of brands that, you know, could be worth, you know, 10 times what this thing is worth. And I'm like, it just that just doesn't sound like a lot of fun. That just sounds yeah. like a real grind again when I'm already doing what I'm passionate about. If I just keep focus on focusing on this and growing this, that sounds like a lot more fun, help a lot more people. And and in the end of the day, might might, you know, achieve the same or better uh, results anyway. So, um, yeah. but, but also to your point of not doing just what other people are doing. An example is I've been doing internet marketing for 15 years and I'm not even on social media myself, believe wow. it or not. So <laughs> I kind of figured out a while ago, like it's, it's actually, you know, it's it just, it's, you know, and look, some people love social media. Yeah. Some people it's been great for them. For me personally, I just, I've always thought it's been a bit noisy and a lot of distractions and I don't necessarily want to hear everyone that I've ever met's opinion about everything. Yeah. Um, so I literally just keep zero friends on Facebook and, and, um, you know, if I, if I, keep, if once I friend one person, I got to friend everyone. Right. So I just keep it zero. <laughs> And, um, and, and, you know, the people I need to speak with or connect with, I, I still do. So mm -hmm. it's just another example of, you know, you don't have to do this or have to do that. Oh, you have to be on social media. You have to do this. You have to do that. Um, you can, you can think about and purpose, be purposeful about what you really want. Yeah. Do you use social media for your company? We, we advertise on Facebook and yes, the, yeah. the company does have uh, yeah. social uh, Instagram yeah. and Facebook, where we put out content uh, for people to consume uh, as mm -hmm. well. So yeah, and I'm in a few groups like on Facebook, uh, different groups, mastermind groups and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, th that's such a good point, though. There are so many people that feel like they have to do everything. No, mm -hmm. you don't. You don't have to do everything. Mm -hmm. Or they think they have to hop on the next big thing. And, right. you know, I'm on several different platforms and but even like facebook i don't go on and spend a lot of time looking through the news feed because it'll it'll drive me crazy because mm -hmm. most people it's kind of human nature it's easier to talk about negative things it's kind of mm -hmm. people get a bigger charge out of talking about negative things and i just i can't deal with it and, and then there are so many other people that are like they're talking about good things, but it's like fakey good where you're like, okay, mm -hmm. I know your life isn't that perfect. And so <laughs> I'm on there, but I don't spend a lot of time on there. So I think it's really, I, I say funny and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, in a good mm -hmm. way, funny that you're not that, you know, it shows that you do it your way, you know, mm -hmm. like that old song, I did it my way. Oh, do yeah. it your way and you're going to be so much happier. And, mm -hmm what you were saying about them saying, Oh, if you acquire all these other brands, the other thing is how much money, you know, it's like right. you, there's there, it gets to a point. It's like, how much money do you need? Money isn't the point, you know, you want to make a certain amount, but that's not the point of your life. So I love that. Exactly. I love that exactly. you're in your own path. Thank you. Yeah. And I will go back. I will say too, you know, while we're on that point, you know, I'm in a couple masterminds now with that, you know, some of them have a lot of high net worth individuals and things of that nature. And one of the biggest things I see is that a lot of these people are neglecting their health yeah. and it's, it's really unbelievable. And I think to myself, man, you know, you're so smart, you're making all this money, you're doing all these, you know, you have all these businesses, but yet, you know, you might die at age 65 when you could have lived to age 105, right? Yeah. Like what's the point of making all this money if you're not alive or if you're not healthy to provide, to be around for your family and your loved ones and the people that need you. So I try to take people back to, to that inspiration. And there's a famous, you know, a uh, quote that says a healthy person has a thousand wishes, but a sick person has only one. And so true. I, 
I remember that. Like when I was in pain, I couldn't think about anything other than getting out of pain. Yeah. Um, and so most people, unfortunately, wait until it's too late. Uh, and then they, you know, there was, I was talking to a doctor and he said, yeah, you know, when I tell people to change their diet, you know, after they've got the cancer diagnosis, they change their diet real fast. Unfortunately, yeah. it's, it's after, right? So that's part of my mission is to inspire people to take, take charge of your health now and, you know, have the goal of, of living longer uh, and, and being there, be, have, living a, a life full of energy and vitality, not just adding, you know, 20 miserable years, 20 healthy, vital yeah. years, you know, to your, to your life where, you know, I also see others, people in the mastermind that are, you know, 85 years old and still attending masterminds and still, you know, having great, you know, relationships with their family and still staying active. And, and that's another thing. So I'm, I'm like, I never really want to retire as long as I'm doing something I'm happy right. about because I've seen my father and other people, unfortunately, you know, retire and, and, and just, you know, sit home watching the news all day. And, and I've seen that that is not helpful for longevity or just, just mental and physical, um, you know, being, being the best you could be there. So I would say, you know, prioritize your health, prioritize it now and, and, you know, we could talk about some things around there as well. Some, some strategies that I have um, that could be helpful for people. Yeah, I would love to do that. I'm 59, but I can't imagine ever, ever not working because the work that I do doesn't feel like work, but I used to be way healthier. I used to work out, you know, I had a much more structured life. Not that it has to be really, I, I ate a lot better. You know, I worked out much more um, regularly. You know, I had my mm -hmm. schedule and, and all that. And I eat a lot of junk now. And as I showed you, you know, <laughs> actually, <laughs> I don't think phases don't though. You know what I mean? Like we all, like, unless you really are intentional about it, it's easy to fall yeah. back on things or just go through phases in life and you're stressed or you're tired or you're just lazy with some things. I think we all kind of go through those those aspects, you know, as you're going through whatever your, your coping mechanism is, I think, think for a lot of us, it's food and it's cope. You know, I mean, I know for myself, yeah. like, you're stressed out. Okay. It's like, I'm going to open the pantry. You know what I mean? Like find, find us something like that. And so I'm curious too, like what kind of education, I know you're, you're in these groups and you're doing a lot of those with these high level thinkers, but what kind of education does your company do to really get the word out and to really like positively help encourage people to take supplements or be healthier from the get go? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, well, one of the, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick strategy. Cause I used to know this health coach and people would pay him like $10,000 and he would come to their house. And the first thing he would do is throw all the junk out of their pantry. Right. That, that's the easy solution. Right. So, um, you know, if you want to save 10 grand on a coach and, and uh, take massive action right now, like go in your pantry and throw away all the cookies and all the other stuff, because if you don't have it, uh, makes it a much more of a challenge to actually eat it. So, yeah. so that, that's actually a quick and easy step um, that, that could save you the money on the coach uh, on that one. But I would say so a couple of things. Number one, it's about Again, hopefully conversations like this will inspire, you know, even you, Lisa, right? And inspire yes. everyone who's listening to, to you know what, you know, maybe, maybe he's right. Maybe I should prioritize my health because it, it is the most important thing in life. And, and you know, maybe exercising in the middle of the day rather than jamming in four, four calls in a row is, is, is actually going to help me. Um, I actually, I actually find that the days that I exercise and go to the gym, um, you know, some, even though it's maybe 90 minutes less out of my day, cause I stretch and I'm, I'm not in a rush. I'm listening to my, yeah. to my, uh, audio books. And, but on those days I tend to get more done, at least more important stuff and more in general. And I'm more energized, uh, at the end of the day and more happy. It we know that it releases endorphins. We know that the biggest thing in terms of depression, the number number one thing you can do is exercise uh, and it, it'll be more effective than any antidepressant you can take. Um, sure. And so prioritizing that and, and saying like, yeah, in the middle of my day, schedule it, right? So things like that. But I think that on a higher level, it's about really, I talk about I try to talk about things that are a little different, right? Because I could give you the easy, the easy, quick stuff, which is like literally like in, in five seconds, I could tell you no sugar, no yeah. fried foods. Um, you know, uh, what else? You know, I, I personally don't eat bread or pasta, although some people, if you're eating some organic kind or, you know, gluten free yeah. or whatever, it's probably better than others. So I'm not yeah. telling people to necessarily take extreme ones, but I think, I do think that cutting out 
the sugar drinks or even even the diet soda because the artificial sweeteners in there do have an impact and they can kind of mess with your uh, blood sugar levels and in, yeah. uh, in, in a way similar to sugar. So I, I do think if if you could kind of try to stick to more like you know, water, water with lemon or unsweetened iced tea or, you know, um, even coffee, as long as there's no sugar, uh, an organic coffee, we actually sell a, a lot of a, a really uh, high antioxidant organic coffee that's grown at high altitudes and yeah, all that kind of that stuff. Yeah, I saw that in your site. I just showed my cousin this afternoon. I saw that. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to send you some uh, after this. Yeah, let me know. Um, but, but, but so that's really like the basics, like kind of like everyone knows that, like, um, but, but then how do you do that? Right. And so I will say another kind of further tip right there first, before I get into the, the mindset part of it is, you know, what really did help me was, uh, I don't like to say that I follow any kind of diet cause I'm not on a, I'm not on a diet. This is my lifestyle. This is how I'm always going to live and eat, but, uh, paleo, which basically means no sugar and no processed carbohydrates and, um, basically eating how we did when we were living off the land before all the all the processed stuff happened. And, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, foods here that have ingredients. Unfortunately, you know, kids cereal, most of the kids cereal have ingredients that are actually outlawed in Europe, but yet oh somehow God. they're legal here. Um, and so, you know, I can go on and on about that. But I would encourage people, if you really want to take care, change your diet, look up paleo, um, there's tons of paleo recipes and paleo cookbooks and things like that. And that right there is probably 90% of it. You know, there's keto and keto is a bit extreme and difficult to follow. If you're, you know, if you're serious, it, it works. Um, if you're serious and you do it right, but paleo is kind of easier to follow. You can still eat fruits and vegetables, you know, on keto, you're not supposed to really eat fruits and, um, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. So paleo is easier to follow. It's more natural, real whole foods. So I'd encourage people to, to look into that. But from a deeper level, what I like to talk about that I don't hear many other people talk about is kind of is really changing your identity around health, right? Mm -hmm. And changing. So like, if I say to you, um, uh, uh, you know, hey, do you want a cigarette? Right? Hopefully, you'll say no, thank you. I don't smoke. Right? right. And so I've done a lot of studying around psychology and, and NLP, neuro linguistic programming, which is kind of studying different belief systems and language patterns. And so, uh, for example, if someone says, no, thank you, I don't smoke, that shows that their identity is I'm not a smoker. Right. Right. And so I give the example of, you know, almost every weekend I go to a kid's birthday party with my daughters or something. And inevitably the piece of cake starts getting passed around and, um, and people think it's rude if they don't eat the cake or something, you know, but for me, there's never a question or a decision because my identity is I don't eat cake. Right. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that once a year, if I want to eat a cheesecake or whatever on a special occasion anniversary or whatever, I'm not going to beat myself up about eating it because I know that in general, I don't eat that. Right. So yeah. I'm not talking about, oh, you're never allowed to cheat. But in general, if you're cheating every week or, you know, or, or you know, most, that, that that can be an issue. So my mm -hmm. identity is I don't eat cake. So when the piece of cake comes out, I don't have to think about like, Oh, I don't know. Should I cheat today? Or it kind of looks good, this one or that. It's just, it's very simple. There's no energy or mental battle going on. It's just, no, thank you. I don't eat cake. And no, thank you. I don't eat bread. No, thank you. I don't eat fried foods. Um, no, thank you. I don't drink soda, you know, or, or anything like that. Um, so for me, like, just that's my identity. I'm just laughing because people listening are probably like, man, that's all the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, the laughing. other thing is, though, it, it changes your your taste buds and your cravings change. Yes, so you may not believe you. me right now, but no, I, do. I actually, I do. yeah, well, the green superfoods that the, the organic green superfoods taking that actually because it's so alkalizing in your body um, it, it versus sugar and, and things like that are very acidic. It, it has a kind of a counter effect and also really helps reduce uh, the cravings. And so for me, I crave really healthy stuff now. Right. And so. Uh, when I think about a piece of cake, uh, and listen, I do like a piece of maybe a piece of organic dark chocolate, um, you know, that that's actually quite healthy for you uh, if you get the right one, but not like a, a processed, you know, piece of like, you know, commercial cake or something like that. Um, and so um, uh, what was I going to where was I going with that? Um, I lost my train of thought there. 
Um, oh yeah. So basically right now, when I get a piece of, if, if I, if I was to eat a piece of cake or when I look at that piece of cake, I literally think to myself, oh, that looks so disgusting. Like yeah. how gross am I going to feel after I eat that piece of cake? Because I've trained myself to think about how do I feel? And yeah. when you start to eat really clean, if you eat really clean for 60 or 90 days, and then you eat something like a piece of cake, you're going to feel awful. You're going to be like, oh, this is this, like this is not a yeah. good feeling. Like I'm kind of like shaking a little. I'm like off balance a little bit. That's like me if I was to eat a piece of cake or or drink a soda right now. And so over time, um, it, it's really most people, unfortunately, you know, it, it's a weird way to say it. But we talk about alcoholism. We talk about people being addicted to drugs or cigarettes. But really, there's an addiction to sugar and, and, and certain yeah. types of food. Mm -hmm. um, both mentally and physically, right? And I think so. it's so interesting what you're saying, too, and just relating it to, um, you know, of course, you know, being type one, I wear devices on my body. So I literally have a device that, so the, the Dexcom, for people that are familiar, it literally measures what your blood sugar is. And so I get to actively watch what food does to mm. me throughout the day. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of studies out there and there's going, there's becoming more popularity around getting those on athletes and things like that, because you can I'm watch trying to get one. Yeah. Ah, okay. So there's like a lot of these things and I have a lot of, you know, a lot of different opinions on that and access for people, but that's a whole different conversation, but it's fascinating and it's really educational to literally watch what a piece of cheese does to your body, you know, versus a piece of bread or whatever it is, a drink. Um, mm -hmm. Having that real time information allows you to say, if you're going to run, if you're eating healthier, like you're saying, so you're eating a clean diet for 60, 90 days, what, how tight your blood sugar range will probably be versus mm -hmm. you throw in that piece of cake and how awful you feel and you're watching that in real time. I will say that just having that device on my body has made me want to eat healthier just because you see it. There's that visualization and it's like, the, oh my gosh. And then you're in tune with your body. So you can literally make adjustments in real time. I'm fascinated that you're going to try to get one. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. I have a good friend who who did it. And you know, again, it's not something that we would do indefinitely, but I had a friend who did it to see exactly which foods yeah. had which effects on his body. Uh, he was he got it from Europe because he was originally from Europe. But I think now that there are ways that I can get it, I think I need a prescription from someone. But there are some like health clinics that are are actually allowing people to to get them these days. And yeah, it's great great piece of uh, feedback. It really um, is. Yeah. 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 Another quick hack. There's there's also something called a aura ring. O u uh, o u r a aura. Uh, okay. And it's a ring that you can put on airplane mode at night um, and sleep with it and then put it back on the charger in the morning. And it tells you how your deep sleep was, how your REM sleep was, because we know sleep is a very important part of health as well. So I'd recommend not drinking caffeine in the evening or late afternoon, um, you know, trying to have a total blackout. Uh, I actually wear those silly blue light blocking glasses at night, you know, because I don't I'm trying to, again, optimize the deeper, more deep sleep and REM sleep that I can get. Um, and so then you have this thing that where you can measure like, okay, if I eat a meal 30 minutes before bed, I notice that my REM sleep and deep sleep is not as good as if I don't eat for three hours before bed, or if I drink caffeine or, you know, uh, on, on new year, on new year's day, when I woke, when I woke up on new year's day and it said, you know, red alert from drinking too much last night. Um, and you know, you can see the difference. Um, so those are, those are cool, uh, devices. Uh, but you know, that's, that's after you, you, you get through the normal original ba basic stuff. So we don't need to get too advanced on people just yet. Yeah. Do you have any other mindful t mindfulness tips before we leave? I'm loving this. Yeah. So let's see. Um, I just think that, you know, wherever you are right now, um, you know, sometimes sometimes you need to get to a certain point to realize that you need to make a change. Yeah. So I just I would just say and encourage people that you know, don't beat yourself up over, you know, oh, I should have been doing this longer or why didn't I do this or whatever. Just, you know, maybe that all that happened to get you to this point where now you've realized I need to make a change, right? If I didn't hit rock bottom, maybe I wouldn't have made a change. And, and you know, so maybe if you're ready now to make a change, then then everything that's led up has led you to this point. And now you can make that change and, and, um, and you know, move forward with that. So just kind of, um, 
you know, not being worried about the past and not going too crazy about the future. Um, so again, that goes back to kind of being present and really just like, you know, I, I know that I'm doing the best I can, right? So my, my, my biggest regret actually is to, to be old uh, on my, you know, on my deathbed or whatever, and to look back and say, you know what, I, I wish I would have did better there. Or I wish I would have tried harder there. Or I wish I would have given that a shot. And so um, kind of the, uh, as a matter of fact, Jeff Bezos, when he started Amazon, he called it, he did, a, he did something, I think he called it the regret minimization formula or oh. something where he said, well, you know, I have this super high paying job on Wall Street that makes me good money. But, you know, when I'm an old man looking back on my life, I'm not going to regret leaving this to go try to do, you know, create the best new website on this new thing called the Internet that's taking over and and changing the world. Uh, I'm not going to even if it fails. Right. And so that was kind of my thing. Like when I fired that client, it was like, will I when I'm old looking back on my life, will I regret that? No, even if even if it doesn't work out, I'm not going to regret that. And most of the time we can always go back you know, at least halfway back or do something similar to what we were doing anyway. So, um, yeah, kind of living life purposely from that perspective of like, I want to, you know, trying to minimize the regrets. These, you have given us some really good things to think about. So I want to say two things. First of all, you look so young. I mean, I literally, I thought you were around 30 when I saw your picture. So Thank you. I'm like, hello, <laughs> we all need to eat, eat and act like you're doing because <laughs> you, you do look amazing. I, I did this afternoon when I showed my cousin, I was like, oh, this is the guy that's going to be on the show. And I'm like, God, he's so, he looks like he must be about 30, you know? And so anyway, <laughs> um, but you. I also want to ask you if somebody was going to buy one product mm-hmm. that you offer and what would you recommend that one thing if they want to try to start being healthier? Sure. So I'll, I'll, uh, I actually have an article uh, on our website that has the top 10 supplements most people should take, but then we narrowed it down even more because some people don't like to take even 10. I actually take over 25 or so of my own products uh, on almost pretty much a daily basis. Uh, but that's me. I'm a little crazy. I know. So um, there's 10. I will, uh, the top 10 supplements most people should take. And then I've also narrowed it down to four. I created a starter pack. So if people ever go to my website, uh, buypeakperformance.com, B-U-Y, peakperformance.com is the website. Uh, and you type in starter pack in the search. Those are the top four things that I think most people uh, should take. And they include the organic green superfood powder because those are real. That's like a real whole food. It's not actually, it's not a synthetic supplement. It's, it's actually real organic, you know, grass extracts that are, you know, really, really potent and it's real whole foods. And, and they're superfoods that you're likely not getting really anywhere else. And they're very powerful and they're, they're great for your immune system, energy levels, um, uh, just, just changing your cravings and all sorts of things. So, um, that, that's, that's number one. And then you have a vitamin D plus K it's vitamin D, but all the best vitamin D's also have vitamin K in them. Okay. And even, especially right now, and especially in, in the, in the winter time, um, but, but even in the summertime, most people aren't really getting enough of it, but especially in the winter, um, vitamin D is so important for our immune system, our energy levels. Uh, it's, it's really a precursor to hormones uh, as well. So it's, it's very important. So there's vitamin D plus K. And then I think right now with immune system support being so popular, I would say a zinc uh, is very important. And usually zinc is paired with copper. So you have a zinc plus copper. Uh, and the last one I will say is magnesium. So I take magnesium every night as well. So between the vitamin D plus K, zinc plus copper and magnesium, those are three supplements. And the organic green superfood is is another one that I would probably take first thing in the morning on an empty stomach um, to start your day off the right way with that. Uh, and if you're doing that, you're, you know, those are the biggest deficiencies is the vitamin D, the zinc and magnesium for most people. And those three right now especially are incredibly important remember if we lower inflammation in our body our immune system is a lot stronger i mean even with everything going on right now in the world with with the with the pandemic it's if people um you know what's hurting people is is the this thing called a cytokine storm which is just an inflammation storm in your body so if you have lower inflammation in your body you're going to be way more likely to 
A, possibly not even get it. B, if you yeah. do get it, maybe have no symptoms or much lower systems or three, at least, you know, ensure that you, that you, you know, stay alive. So uh, mm -hmm. I think it's never been a more important time to stay healthy. In fact, I wish that that wasn't um, lost through this whole pandemic. Um, I think that the, the thing that people have not been talking about enough is taking personal responsibility for your own health. That's if we were all point. way healthier, then we would have way less deaths, the way less cases, the shutdown would have been way shorter. So I think that, you know, I wish there would have been more politicians or, you know, news people talking about, hey, you know, um, maybe, maybe don't eat McDonald's today. Maybe don't eat the, the yeah. fried food and soda. Maybe eat something healthy. And maybe that's one of the best defenses and ways to protect yourself uh, against it. Great point. So thank you so much for being on here. But look, y'all, go check out his website so that you can read the great articles. And it's buypeakperformance.com, right? Yes, B-U-Y, buypeakperformance.com. And you actually get 20% off your first order uh, on the website as well if you enter your email. Yep. Okay, and then when you cool. enter your emails, how you'll, I constantly send out, you know, articles or podcasts that I do um, usually on a weekly basis or multiple times per week as well. Okay, great. I'm definitely going to go sign up and check out your starter pack and stuff because yeah. I have been thinking I really need to get healthy again. So this is a great incentive to do it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Rachel, did you have anything else you wanted to ask or say? That was it. Nope, I'm, I'm joining you. I'm going to the website right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Hang on just a second after we leave because we can still talk when we're off air because I have something I want to ask you, okay? Thanks, sure. y'all. Thanks for joining us. And go to my website to, to mm -hmm. re-watch this or to watch any of my past shows. Go on there and... I hope that you enjoyed it tonight and I will see you Thursday. Yes, Thursday. I can't remember who my guest is, so I'm not going to say, but <laughs> all right. Thanks y'all. Bye.